Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And this message, the shocking truth of the Pale Horse Rider, it's a very difficult message to bring to you guys. I have been doing an amazing amount of study on this for, for several days. And I believe there is far greater links in the scripture to the identity of the rider, the mission, etc., of the Pale Horse Rider. And uh, as a compliment to the message I brought out about the seven seals and specifically focus more on the four horse riders. This is why I'm going into this message now. Um, so let me let me get started here with you here on this. Uh, so let's go here to the scripture back to Revelation chapter 6. And as you can see we have an enormous number of scriptures here on the screen to be looking at today. Uh, from New Testament, Old Testament, even in the book of Daniel, <clears throat> going into multiple chapters in Revelation, I believe that also uh, encompass a lot of the details of uh, Revelation chapter 6. But as we look at this, and just as a quick recap, uh, you know, I mentioned to you that the white horse rider, the red horse rider, um, white horse, no doubt Great Britain conquering and to conquer, 300 years that they spent doing that globally. Uh, then we get into the second seal. We get the red horse. Power was given to them to set there on to take peace from the earth. That seems to be more like the United States. And they did. They caused peace to be removed. They have killed one another all over the world in the name of Christianity, no less. So in a way, that sword uh, that they're given there represents the word of God as well as the fact that they're killing um, and then we get into that third seal, and that's the economic uh, aspects of things. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the fourth beast say, Come and see. And a, and a black horse, so the one that sat upon him, had a pair of balances in his hand. And, uh, and I heard a voice in the midst that said, You know, measure wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. Uh, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So there is a protection that is going to be given by this third horse rider. And oddly enough, that uh, at least the wine aspect of this, I do believe, is that protection for that fourth horse rider, uh, which it's not the rider himself, but it's the fact that it's Israel uh, or the so-called uh, Jewish people. It's not the real Jewish people, but the so-called Jewish people uh, that we find that is going to be mentioned in the book of Revelation, the great whore of Babylon, and how that she is uh, uh, made the world drunk by the wine of her fornication. And so, therefore, they're not, you know, that third horse rider is not to hurt the oil and the wine. And I believe that has a lot to do with that, especially as they're going about uh, controlling the economic system of the world. We just saw this recently, too, when Netanyahu comes out and publicly addresses uh, he could control the politicians in the United States to, to, to not be, as he calls it, anti-Semitic. But he couldn't control the universities, the faculty, nor the presidents of the universities because, well, they're not, they weren't part of that scheme of things. So he demanded that something be done in America because of that. And sure enough, the police in different states and all these universities, they go in there, they arrest teachers, uh, they arrest students. Uh, they really begin to crack down. Why? Because the politicians are controlled by that beast system. And they're already made drunk by the wine of her fornication. Uh, and so therefore, that's how he's able to crack down. Here he is, a foreign leader of the state of Israel, controlling what is being done legislatively in every state in the United States of America. What a crying shame that is. Uh, anyway, we get into that fourth seal and a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. Hell followed with him, and power was given unto them. So the power is given to both death and hell over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth, the reptilians, uh, in my opinion, that is. So as we look at this, I wanted to start off because death 
is being used as a uh, first, like a first person. It's a, it's, a, it's a person. Death is not just the fact of the way people are going to die, but it's actually a personage. And so I begin to look scripturally at that. And death is capitalized, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting, O oh, grave? Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Well, that's interesting in itself right there. The strength of sin is the law. So the sting of death, Death is riding the horse. He's got a sting. His sting uh, that he has that causes death is the sin is, uh, is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that too, if we go back, we find out that the fourth part of the earth will be killed with sword, with hunger, and with death, which is the law. Sword. That could even be a part of the Noahide law system that he uses. And of course, it is the law, which is death itself. And bringing about those Noahide laws is what would be that would put to... The, the Noahide laws themselves are Talmudic laws that bring about that destruction of mankind. They'll be able to put people to death. Anti-Semitism, it'll become a death crime. And you've already seen that Israel now is showing exercise and that they have authority over this nation. Let's take a look at what Netanyahu said there and how that reaction is happening in this nation. What's happening on America's college campuses is horrific. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over leading universities. This is reminiscent of what happened in German universities in the 1930s. It's unconscionable. It has to be stopped. It has to be condemned and condemned unequivocally. But that's not what happened. The response of several university presidents was shameful. Now, fortunately, state, uh, local, federal officials, many of them have responded differently, but there has to be more. More has to be done. That was Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is not the Prime Minister of the United States. He's the Prime Minister of a foreign country, Israel. And he feels the need to weigh in on what is transpiring on college campuses across our country. And he wants to squash those protests. He wants more to be done. We didn't vote for him. We don't support him here at TYT. So who is he to tell this country what they need to do in response to mostly peaceful protests? I get that there is a narrative playing out in corporate media. Totally understand you know, what that's motivated by. But the fact of the matter is, you go to campus after campus, you speak to protesters, the actual protesters, the, the, the demonstrators who organize the protests. Many of those protesters happen to be Jewish themselves, but we keep hearing about how it's all anti-Semitic. Because apparently, criticizing Israel's slaughter of civilians in Gaza is anti-Semitic. It's the same thing as uh, what the Nazis carried out during the Holocaust. Yeah, because. So there you have it there, and that's just going to give you a little bit of a, a glimpse into what we're talking about there. So it's a very demonic government. But granted, death and hell follows with him. That's not the Israeli people, but they are in collaboration with these demonic entities. And I want to kind of share some of that with you so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let's first go to uh, Rabbi uh, Ariel Tzedak. And I want to play a little small clip of where he was on the History Channel and what he says there. I think this is very important that you see this, what he actually says on the History Channel there, about Israel's help is going to come up from the underworld. Listen in. Tradition tells us that the army of the Messiah is not to come from heaven, but is to arise from inner earth and therefore dominate the surface world. So the inner earth 
is where uh, Israel's help is going to be, and they're going to dominate the earth. Let's take a look at what he says on his own channel, Kosher Torah School of Rabbi Ariel Bar Tzedak, and listen to what he says here. Rose in Germany. People were dabbling with these continents, with these other entities. It was always misunderstood to be magic and spiritual and the occult. Until finally, the reality of the underlying technology, interdimensional technology, of how it all operates, came about. We discovered it was the same technology that was used in the pre-Adamic civilizations. And that we're dealing with the pre-Adamic civilizations. And their representatives in space, their representatives in inner earth, their representatives in parallel dimensions. And they are intelligent, non-human sentient beings. That's a term that was coined by government authorities when dealing with the entity that they discovered at Skidwalker Ranch. So I didn't make that up. These entities, many of them, a group of them we call the Watchers, they manipulate us telepathically. We communicate with them telepathically. They will inspire us for good, Racha Kodesh, or they can inspire us for evil, Ruach Ra. They control the minds of people, and they're in control of the minds of the people who are running our society right now. And society is going in a direction based upon the energetic signature of where people are at. It's as if there's a big pendulum which is swinging, being pushed, 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 pushed. I'll pause it for there now. Uh, it's not actually the part I wanted you to be able to hear. He talks about uh, the reptilians and how that the reptilians are actually the seraphim. And uh, he considers them to be good guys. Um, and maybe it's right here. Let me just see real quick. Long ago, all right? Some might still be around. Ask some of the soldiers who fought in Afghanistan. Well, maybe that was just a lie. Hmm. Yeah. Moving right along. Who were these people? Even Rabbi Aaron Soloveitchik, Alava Shalom, was the Rosh Hashiva, brisk. He wrote, and he knew, they were what, the, what our traditions call the Ishim. They were representatives. We call them Malachim. But what they were were the pre-Adamic humans who went to another planet, planet, and lived there. Maybe in a different dimension of that planet that we would be experiencing. So I will tell you this. You can accept this or not. Every planet in our solar system, Mars, Venus, Mercury, even the moon, they're all fully, fully inhabited with ancient civilizations that are technologically advanced with millions and millions of inhabitants but maybe not in our dimension of perception. Here's something you need to understand. Well, kind of pause it again. Again, I did not find the right place. You guys have heard me speak about this before and showed you where he talks about the, the reptilians, etc., and where he talks about that they are the seraphim. They are the helpers of mankind. And, uh, I thought I had it in the right place when I started this off, but nonetheless, you did get the part on the History Channel where he talks about their help comes from within inner earth, and that, that's uh, that's also an important aspect of that, and so we'll just, let's move right along with this there. So hell follows with him, follows with death as riding that horse, uh, and, uh, you know, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death. And, and they're using, the thing is, the, the so-called Jewish people are the people, the very people that they are using. Uh, now, this is a scripture where it talks about death in 1 Corinthians. It's coming from, uh, and I believe that is Isaiah. Yes, Isaiah chapter 25. He will swallow up death forever. Now, the reason why that is capitalized in the New Testament is because it's hamot uh, with the 
letter hey in front of it, that's a definite article, which now makes that more like a proper name. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off the faces, and the reproach of his people uh, will he take away from off all the earth. Okay, that's what's going to happen at that time there. But we also have Isaiah that talks about hell, or as it mentions there in Revelation, death and uh, and hell followed with him, correct? So we have this in Isaiah. The netherworld from beneath is moved for you to meet you at thy coming. The shades are stirred up in thee, and even all the chief ones of the earth, all the kings of the nations are raised up from their thrones, and they do answer and say unto you, Are you also become weak as we? Are you become likened unto us? Uh, now, the thing is, in my opinion, they're talking about death. Death is coming to them. So the netherworld from beneath is moved for you to meet you at your coming. Sheol, right there, I have it highlighted in black right there, the netherworld or hell. Hell is moved. See, he's, they're moved. The whole earth is rest and quiet. They break forth in singing, yea, the cypress rejoice thee and the cedars of Lebanon. Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. The netherworld from beneath is moved for you to meet you at thy coming. All right, so that's what we're, that's what, you know. Um, then, of course, we get down here, the another part, <clears throat> How art thou fallen <coughs> from heaven, O day star, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? Thou didst cast lots over the nations, and thou saidest in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven above the stars of God. I will exalt my throne. I will sit upon the mount of the meeting in the uttermost parts of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to the netherworld, to the uttermost parts of the pit. So death, and by the way, there's, I have a pl plenty of uh, information and other writings that can support uh, the sun of the morning, that star there, as death. Uh, and let me just, some of these writings here, let me just take you to them. Uh, that's actually speaking. Well, this actually is important to know, too, uh, because this lets you know that the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago were in cahoots with the archons, the demons, and therefore, it's no different today as we're seeing this fourth horse rider uh, come, come out there. This is in the Egyptian writing. It says, I will speak to those who know and hear with the ears of the body, but with the ears of the mind. For many have sought after the truth and have not been able to find it, because there has taken a hold of them the old leaven of the Pharisees and the scribes of the law. And the leaven is the errant desire of the angels and the demons and the stars. As uh, for the Pharisees and the scribes, it is they who belong to the archons who have authority over them. For no one is under the law will be able to look up to the truth, for they will not be able to serve to masters. It's one of the reasons why I'm so hard about the law. It is that whereas Jesus says in the New Testament, you cannot serve two masters. All right? You can't. You're either going to hate one and love the other or love the one and hate the other. So you cannot serve Jesus Christ and serve the law. That's not the way it works. And he tells you right here that the Pharisees and scribes belong to the archons and they're the ones that have authority over them. So when you're following modern day Phariseeism, which is uh, the state of Israel and the Orthodox community there, you're following after archons that have authority over them, whether you realize, realize it or not. Um, so, and, and right here at the very end where it also says, and they turn away from the light who are unable to pass by archon of darkness until they pay the last penny. That archon of darkness, there it again. Who rides that fourth horse? It's darkness. So, I'm sorry, death. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so let's take and also... Uh, there's another one I'm looking for here. Let me get the right one. I may have to back up. Let's see. Here we go, right here. Death. Remember, death is writing him. This is in the Nag Hammadi works here under the book of Melchizedek. And I'm using this more as a historical reference because the book is 2,000 years old. Uh, I'm not using it as a, let's say, we don't consider this a biblical text. 
but nonetheless it is a historical document and it helps to support for us that death is a person. It says, proclaim them. Death will tremble and be angry, not only he himself, but also his fellow world-ruling archons and the principalities and authorities. And we already know from what I just showed you that the principalities and the archons, all right, two things. One, they're in that nether world. They come up. We know from Scripture that the nether world is brought up to meet him. And they're meeting who? They're meeting death is who they meet because that morning star is death. He's cast out of heaven. And there's actually, I actually have found in some of these writings where he's, re he's referred to as death. His name is called death. Uh, not just uh, son of the morning or, or that morning star or Lucifer, but he's, he's, he's simultaneously given those names there. So then we have uh, that one there. But notice... You know, and his fellow world ruling archons. And then, as we saw with the case of the Pharisees, that the Pharisees and the scribes, they belong to the archons and have authority over them. So the modern day Phariseeism, those that are claiming to be Jews and are not, are those that are working with demonic entities right down to death and everything that we see there. So it is no wonder then, that, like, for example, where Jesus says in Matthew here, even also outwardly you appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchers of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of, uh, of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves, that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. So, Again, it keeps coming down. Jesus applies it to a generation long before them and holds them accountable. We also have here, this is also the very place where he calls them serpents, generation of vipers, but then holds to them the account of all the blood shed on the earth going all the way back to righteous Abel and to the blood of Zacharias, son of Bacchaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So he's, he's indicted them, the Pharisees. And then, of course, you have in John, where he says here, John chapter 8, verse 41 to 44, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not be born of fornication. We have one father, even God. The reason why they're saying fornication, they're going back to the Babylonian captivity. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. All right? So you have that. You have all these scriptures here. Uh, clearly proving these things. And uh, when we get over here, once we jump back into Revelation here in a little bit, we're going to find out, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Power was given him to over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of earth world. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity sh shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right, let's jump back now. We're going to jump in here into Jeremiah. And this is where Jeremiah is accusing them. And, of course, we're looking at the modern days where they're going to be using the sword to kill. But just to set a stage here, because you're going to be looking at a lot of different scriptures today. In vain have I smitten your children. They received no correction. Your sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying line. And there it is right there. Hanavachim. Hanavichem. Your prophets. O generation, see the word of the Lord. Have I been in the wilderness unto Israel or a land of thick darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we roam at large. We will come no more unto you. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. 
You know, just think about all these different scriptures that clearly, um, and again, they have this one here. This is over in Revelation 16. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And you hast thou given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another uh, out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Um we have here Revelation chapter 18. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain upon the earth. I mean, we're looking at, we're looking at the judgment of the great whore of Babylon but what lets you know who Babylon is, is the blood of the prophets, the saints, and all that were slain upon the earth. And I just got through reading to you where, where Jesus had indicted them over here in Matthew. Uh, right here, and I'll change the color so we can look at this a little better there. All the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel into the blood of Zacharias Barcaeus. See, all the righteous blood shed upon the earth was done by the Pharisees. So when we think of the scripture, they that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Um, he that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Let's see. Trying to see if I where I had that at. You know the scripture though that I'm thinking about where he says, you know, you are the sin. Oh, that's actually in Revelation. It's in chapter two, I believe it is. Let me see if I can find it. I know here we go, right here. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things, saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blaspheme blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan. Remember how it said that the, the, the heads were full of names of blasphemy? There's your blasphemy right there. It's the ones that are saying they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. That's, that's the names of blasphemy that are written on those crowns there. So let me, let's see, we've got to jump back here. Let's get to the right place. Now, let's see, let's see, okay, we already did that. We've already got John. Let's see, Revelation 13. We read that one already. Then we went into Revelation. That's, this is Revelation 17. And there came a, one of the seven angels with the seven vials talking to me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. All right, remember, uh, the third horse rider was told, Hurt not the oil and the wine. It's got to be fulfilled. In other words, the evils that Israel is going to do has got to be fulfilled. So they were told, do not hurt the oil and the wine. And then we find, sorry about these advertisements, that's the link I have open here does that. Have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she carried me away. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Full of names of blasphemy. How many times have they claimed to be Jews and they were not? They're Khazarians, they're uh, Pharisees, they're Babylonians, they're Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Moabites, whatever they mingled in with that, right? 
And, uh, and so that's exactly what you have there. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations, the filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Well, we, we've already identified scripturally the Pharisees and, Sages, Pharisees and sages of 2,000 years ago. Jesus indicted for the blood of the prophets and of the saints. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her. which hath seven heads and ten horns, and the beast that thou sawest was and is not shall ascend out of the bottomless pit mm. and go into perdition. There comes that bottomless pit now. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom, the seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now we know Rome Italy sits on seven mountains, but did you know Jerusalem also sits on seven mountains? Sure it does. Sure it does. Then you get into Revelation 18. No, this, I'm sorry, Revelation 15. Why do I have? Oh, this is totally different. Oh, this is beautiful too, by the way. We'll come to this here in just a minute. Let me go to... Okay. I gotta remember why I have certain things marked. Oh, I do, I remember now why I marked this, but I don't think I have everything together to be able to bring all that out. Um, let's go back here to, Re and I think I need to switch into Revelation 18, and I don't have it up, so let's just do it this way. Oh, no, nope. next chapter, there we go. <clears throat> and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And, you know, I'm thinking at the same time here, do I have it? Yeah, Daniel, you do have Daniel up. Okay, good. He carried me away... <clears throat> Uh, excuse me, a mighty with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils and hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornications with her. The merchants of the earth are waxed rich through her abundance of her delicacies. Remember, there is that control of economics in that third horse rider. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. You know what that tells me? There's many good Christian people, there's many good Jewish people that have bound up with the Pharisaic dynasty of the modern state of Israel that have no idea that they have made a covenant with death and hell. And that's why God is telling you to come out of her. The longer you stay part of that demonic in, uh, that demonic kingdom, the more chances you will end up receiving of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath fill, filled to her double. And see, so many people feel like that she, oh, Israel's this great thing. No, Israel is coming out. Israel is believing. Her plagues are going to come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off, fear her torment. Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment has come. Can you imagine? I mean, if, when this happens... To Israel, the world will mourn because so many people are so convinced that this is a godly thing that has taken place in modern times, and it's not. The merchants were made rich, right? When the people are crying, seeing her with her burning, what does God say? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets. 
for God hath avenged you on her. And mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. That's when the destruction will actually come. So, again, remembering now, death was riding that horse. Hell followed with him. Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, and with death and the beast of the earth. All right, let's continue on. I want to take you, though, to Daniel. And I brought, Daniel really kind of made me think that there's a lot of similarities between that of Revelation, what we're reading there, and what we see in the book of Daniel in that fourth kingdom. Kind of interesting, right along with the fourth horse rider. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings that shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth beast, which was diverse from all of them exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron and its nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head, the other horn which came up and before which three fell, even that horn that had, had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, whose appearance was great that, than that all of its fellows. And I beheld, and some horn made war, excuse me, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days and the judgment was given, the saints of the Most High, and the time came, and the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon the earth, and shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And as for the ten horns, and of this kingdom shall ten kings arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the former, and he shall put down the three kings." And he shall speak words against the Most High, and shall swear out, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the season and the law, and they shall be given into his hand until a time's time and half a time. So it just like I said, it's very interesting the similarities of those two right there, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to share that with you. Um, let me see here. We got Romans nine, okay, and then Revelation. Oh, by the way, this is where they, they think they can overcome uh, Jesus Christ himself in Revelation 19. Uh, they, uh, that you may eat the flesh of kings and flesh of captains, flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond. Um, All the flat fowls fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourself together for the supper of that great God, right? And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, this is not the four horses of Revelation uh, chapter 6, but this is Jesus coming out on a white horse, totally different. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet, and the wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and then that, that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And, and I'm telling you, that mark is going to come right out of modern day Israel. And it may be uh, where they put the letter Tav on you, those that are going to be those that support Israel, and then those that do not take that, uh, that they'll call you anti-Semites and begin to put the people to death. I want to go back, though, here to... Uh, Revelation 15, this one also I found very interesting. Uh, we'll read verse 2 and 3 specifically because I want you to understand what the song of Moses is, those that overcome and sing that song. And I saw as it were as a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark and over the number of his name and stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you, for thy judgments are made 
manifest. Now, they sing the Song of Moses. Anybody that knows anything about the Song of Moses, the Song of Moses is what is um, written here in the, uh, the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, let me just see here if I can make it highlight. Yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, and let me just see here. And at the conclusion of that song, that's what it says. And when Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hoshea, the son of Nun, uh, or I have it over here, uh, the Hoshea ben Nun uh, is where he sings this. They, they recite this song into the ears of the people. But I highlighted some key points in this that I wanted to share with you of that song. Uh so that you understand what God is going to do uh, regarding this. This song here is not a good song for the people of Israel. Okay. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord and ascribe you greatness unto our God. The rock, his work is perfect for all his ways are justice and God and faithfulness and without iniquity just and right is he. Is corruption his? No. His children is the blemish, a generation crooked and perverse. Do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath begotten thee and hath not made thee and established thee? Now I want you to think about this as I go through this here and keep in mind those that get the victory over the beast, over the uh, over the image and over the, the, the mark of the beast and over this whole demonic kingdom that is standing up. That, that, that Those that do not stand with the modern Pharisaic dynasty of today that is running Israel that are claiming to be Jews when they are not, they are the blasphemous names is what they are. Uh, once they begin to do this, we find in the book of Revelation that those that overcame actually sung this song of Moses. That is a reminder to the world of the sins that were happening in modern times. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will declare unto you thine elders and they will tell you. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the children of men, he set borders of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. For the portion of the Lord is his people. Jacob, the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste of a howling wilderness. He compassed him about. He cared for him. He kept him as the apple. Of his eye. As an eagle that stirreth up her nest, hovereth over the young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her pinions, the Lord alone did lead him. And there was no strange God, no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, and did eat the fruitage of the field, and he made him to suck honey out of the crag, and oil out of the flinty rock. Alright, we'll skip these next two, keep on moving down. Verse 16, Thou roused him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations did they provoke him. They sacrificed unto demons, no gods, gods that they knew not, new gods they came up of late, which your fathers dreaded not. Of the rock that begot you, you were, not, you were unmindful and did forget God that bore you. And the Lord saw and spurned because of the provoking of his son, his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them and I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation children in whom is no faithfulness. This is what the overcomers are going to be singing to you, Netanyahu. And you are not a Netanyahu either. They've roused me to jealousy with a no God. They have provoked me with their vanities and I will rouse them to jealousy with a no people. I will provoke them with a vile nation. For fire, for fire is kindled in my nostril and burneth into the depths of the netherworld and devour the earth with her produce and set at the blaze the foundation of the mountains. Notice that right there. My... For fire is kindled in my nostrils and burneth into the depths of the netherworld. I will heap evils upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. The wasting of hunger and the devouring of the fiery bolt and the bitter destruction of the teeth of beasts will I send upon them. 
with the venom of crawling things of the dust. We can skip these three here just to save time. Verse 28, For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had given them over and the Lord had delivered them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For thy vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, and their clusters are bitter. By the way, the, the, the whole thing about Sodom was that they were mingled with fallen angel Nephilim bloodline. Their wine is the venom of serpents and the cruel poison of asp. Is not this laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Vengeance is mine and recompense against the time when their foot shall slip. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that are to come upon them shall make haste. For the Lord will judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that, they are, that their stay is gone, and that there is none remaining, shut up or left at large. And as he said, where are their gods, the rock in whom they trusted? Who did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings? Let him rise up and help you. Let him be your protection. By the way, from fat comes oil too. Hurt not the oil and the wine. See now that I have, even I am he, there is no God with me. I will kill, I will make alive. I have wounded, I heal. There is none that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, as I live forever, if I wet my glittering sword, my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine adversaries and I will recompense them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with the blood and my sword shall devour flesh. With the blood of slain, the captives with the long-haired heads of the enemy. Sing, O loud, you nations. And by the way, even though we know who the riders of those two horses are. Isn't it interesting that he says on there, mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword devour flesh. He's allowed them to use. And remember, they're using the sword which represents the word of God. Sing aloud, O you nations and his people, for he doth avenge the blood of his servants and doth render the vengeance of his adversaries and doth make expediation for the land of his people. Now, by the way, the blood of his servants, the prophets, Jesus Christ, his own Messiah. And Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and, the, he and Hoshea Benun. When Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel, he said unto them, Set your heart unto all the words wherewith I testify against you this day, that you may charge your children therewith to observe to do all the words of this law. That's the condemnation. Jesus indicted them. But he still was calling for those that would accept repentance and come out. The question is, is will you come out of her, my people? Will you accept what Jesus Christ has done for you? That is the only hope and the only way. And if you take any other message, you haven't, took, you haven't taken the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people. It's time to really repent. It's a time to get right with God. Because that hour is Fastly and rapidly approaching. And believe me, as believers, they're going to shed a lot more blood of believers. Because you got to remember that pale horse, death, is on him. Hell is following with him. And power is given to them. And they're going to take over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And remember, the fifth seal speaks about the souls into the altar. All those prophets and apostles that they have already killed in the time past, they're saying, how long, O Lord, until you avenge our blood? But he says, rest a little while until your fellow servants, that's people like us, 
until they fulfill that, that desire on them. So you see what's happening in Gaza. And by the way, the Gaza, they're, they're being killed. They're being starved. Famine, death, you name it, they're doing it to them. I hope you'll make the right decision and stand with Jesus Christ. If you want to support the work we do, please do. Our website, israelinewslive.org. There's one way you can support the work here. It's right above our head there, our mailing address, Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee. Uh, and as well, um, Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. That's an easy way to support the work we do here. We load every week something new there. A lot of teachings go up there as well from our... We have a, a class I teach every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, that's a Zoom class. It's a link. You just type in www.steven. That's S-T-E-V-E-N. Benun, B E. N-N-U-N dot com. You can join that class live. Uh, we load that up. I haven't loaded. Oh, that's a different one. Anyway, everything's been loaded. That gets loaded up on Patreon. And from time to time, we make those public here on Israeli News Live for you to enjoy as well. God bless you. And thank you for listening.